USS Constellation. There's a grand lady in Baltimore who has taken her rightful place as the Inner Harbor's crown jewel in the heart of the Chesapeake Bay. Imagine that, launched in 1854 and still afloat. Even more exciting, visitors can come aboard Constellation and explore to their heart's content. On board Constellation, history comes alive as visitors touch, feel, and experience what life was like for sailors during the Civil War. Just bring your imagination. The ship you see here, the Sloop of War Constellation, was built at the Gosport Navy Yard in Portsmouth, Virginia and launched in 1854. A newspaper account from the day of her launch reported that there were eight pieces of the original frigate Constellation contained within her timbers. The Sloop of War Constellation that's here in Baltimore today and the Chesapeake Bay has always been central to her story. Throughout her century of service, uh, Constellation served in and out of the Chesapeake Bay. It was kind of like coming home every time she returned to the Chesapeake Bay. She was, she was created here at Gosport Navy Yard. And throughout her career, she came to Annapolis. She spent many years there. She sailed to Philadelphia. She sailed up and down the bay several times. Uh, and uh, every time that she returned, it was like a homecoming for her. Hello everybody, I'm Jerry Getzke, your host for the Top of the Morning Show, coming to you from downtown Baltimore's Inner Harbor, the U.S. Constellation. We're in the belly of the ship. Some ear noises in the background, like, remember it's a public place. We're going to be talking today about Maryland tourism and our guests from the Office of Tourism. your host for the Top of the Morning Show, coming to you again from the beautiful Baltimore downtown Inner Harbor of the U.S. Constellation. Our guest today, Connie Yingling from the Maryland Office of Tourism. Correct. Is that a government agency, a quasi-agency? It is a government agency. Okay. We are part of um, business and economic development. Okay, DBED. Yes. And your function there? My function is as a public relations specialist. So you're going to tell us all about? We're going to talk about uh, what's available, some of the information that you can get from our website, uh, from our brochures and, and our guides, our travel guides. And the website is? www.visitmaryland.org. All right. And what are some of the interesting things that are available there? Oh my goodness, the website could keep you busy for hours and hours. Uh, there are itinerary suggestions. Um, a lot of people, that have not visited Maryland before, um, they know Baltimore, they know Ocean City, they know Annapolis. So part of what our function is, is to get people out to some of the byways, off the highways and onto the byways, and some of the smaller towns and um, our hidden gems. So is it geared primarily for out-of-towners or for people in Maryland and Baltimore to find places that they haven't been to as well. Oh, both actually. Okay. Um, so the our guide, and I do have a copy of the guide that I Great. will share I get with to keep you. One of yes, these. you get to keep one of those. Um, that's the Thomas Point Lighthouse on the cover. I've been there many times yes. when I used to have my boat. Accessible by boat, correct. So um, the guide contains information on the various regions of the state. Our office spreads them into five different regions. Baltimore is in the central region. You have the Eastern Shore, which is basically Cecil County all the way down um, to the Atlantic Ocean. 
you have the capital region, which are the three counties that surround Washington, D.C., ah. Western Maryland, so that's the three counties out in the Allegheny Mountains, and then Southern Maryland, so we've got three counties in Southern Maryland as well. And what makes each of those distinguishable? Uh, different things. Part of it is the history and the heritage that happened in those areas. Some of it's just the convenient, okay, you need to be in the central region because you're surrounding Baltimore okay. and, and that's where you are. But um, every, all of our destinations have their own character and they have their own characters too, which is also okay. part, part okay. of the fun of, of traveling when you get to meet the residents and, and the folks that are out there and running the hospitality uh, industry. So. I can, I can vaguely imagine what you mean. I, I recently had the opportunity to go down to Southern Maryland, which I hadn't really spent a whole lot of time in. And, and I was amazed, first of all, because um, there's a lot of wine growing there, and homegrown wineries and that type of thing, which I had no idea. That's correct. And, um, and they were characters. And they were characters. <laughs> I'm sure they were. Um, lots of personality. You just have to love it. Um, part of the reason for the winer winery growth in Southern Maryland is that that used to be tobacco country and oh, at one point sense, yeah. yep at one point there was a buyout of the tobacco and this is part of a cancer settlement and it starts getting a bunch of technical stuff but um, and somebody got money somebody got money not, not, not grow, tobacco, grow tobacco so in thinking what they could grow with the land that was now available grapes came up high on the list hmm. not only for your grape jellies but now you're getting into the wineries and um, coincidentally enough, Maryland is pretty much in line with France in terms of our weather. If you looked at the globe so and just kind of on if across, you draw a line equatorially, we would be on that. Pretty, line. pretty much in that line. So our, um, our our property and our weather is is well suited to growing grapes. Hmm. I didn't know that until this recent visit, although I, I also understand there's a, a big wine growing industry in northern Baltimore County. Yes, and uh, Baltimore County actually has Maryland's oldest continually operated winery, uh, Bordy. I didn't know that either. Yeah, and they've been in business. And they have Oriole wine. Yes, they do. I know. I love their labels. They put all like the different uh, state symbols on their labels. Yes, so, um, and tying into Maryland and, and to the uh, the heritage there. So. Um, there's a huge difference, and you're talking about these different areas of, of, of Maryland um, in terms of uh, city versus rural and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. That's that's part of it as well. Uh, you get down on the eastern shore. There's a lot of charming little towns. Um, restaurants, shops, little boutique shops, things that are very um, specific to the Eastern Shore. So you'll go in and there's a chocolate shop um, on Canton Arrows and they've got chocolates in the shape of crabs and sailboats and Chesapeake Bay Retrievers and it's just so much fun because, um, well, who doesn't and, and love your chocolate? your job is to go around and find all these things? <laughs> Who doesn't want this job? <laughs> My job is to talk to the media like you and to let folks know that these things are available and to encourage them to travel. Okay, if you had visitors from out of town, family who had never been to Maryland before, what's the first place you would send them to? Um, I'm actually, my family is from Howard County, and I've got a very soft spot for historic Delicate City. Oh. Um, the, a lot of the shops were actually built into the granite walls. There's a shop that you can go into that as you're going up the stairs, one side is the drywall or plaster, as the case may be, and the other side is actually a rough cut piece of granite. So you, okay. they were built right into the hillside. Um, they have the B&O Railroad Station Museum there, so um, fun to go in, see the, the model trains, the folks. Uh, a lot of times they have Civil War reenactors there because this the Union Army came in and wanted to make sure that the Confederates wouldn't tear up the tracks and interfere with okay. the, uh, the train traffic there. Um, Annapolis is another great place. Frederick, I love Frederick. I mean, they've Why? got like a 50 block historic district. Um, the restaurants there are incredible. Um, Volt is one of the premier restaurants in the state. Um, and the Weinberg Art Center. The Weinberg Art Center. Uh, the Carroll Creek. I mean, even if you just wanted to go for a stroll, Carroll Creek's got a lot of public art. They have what they call Trompe de l'Oeil or um, Trick the Eye art, where it's painted onto a concrete, but it looks like it's a cobblestone bridge. 
um, they have what they call angels in the architecture. So there are angels that are painted on the side of walls. There's one where it's an um, um, older gentleman who's kind of leaning out the window and looks 3D. That's my favorite out, out of all of them. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of those things, but right now we're going to take a short break. That's right, we make a, a lot of the stuff right here in the store. Most of the stuff that is made either in, in our kitchen here or in our other kitchen off-site. So um, everything is made fresh and it's all very good. So, high top of the morning. Okay, that's good. We might come back for more in depth tomorrow. Sounds good. Absolutely. the sailing capital of the country and we have an international reputation and so uh, and this industry is very important to the bond rating that the city continues to get double A plus from our bonders when we go out to borrow money and so it is a really a very very important industry. everybody, I'm Jerry Gatka, your host for the Top of the Morning. Our guest today um, is here to talk about Maryland tourism and uh, events coming up or seasons, uh, seasonal things coming up. Oh, one of the, the most exciting is in St. Michael's, we have the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. 18 acres, a number of different buildings, anything from shipbuilding to oystering. Um, they have a uh, a dock where the kids can actually dip for crabs oh. and just really kind of hands-on and fun. That's I've a never good done way that to okay. that's a good way to learn. You're getting so, out in a, in a safe So environment. I'll let an adult mix in with the kids and do Oh of course we <laughs> well, we're all kids at heart. Yes. <laughs> but um, some of us further removed. <laughs> The Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum is celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. So throughout the year, there's um, a series of special events uh, in addition to the ones that they normally have. Um, for example, their summer concert season. They have a beautiful gazebo on the property, and they'll put bands out there and invite folks in with their lawn chairs to listen to. Uh, Are sports. all of these events listed in your catalog? Not all of them. This is a um, pared down list. Uh, if you went to see all of our events, you want to go to the website. Uh, Again, visit Maryland.org 
And um, visit Maryland.org should be run right across the bottom of the screen. That's okay, mistake. perfect. I love that. Um, so, one other really neat thing about Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, they adopted a little tatty cat. Her name is Edna Sprint, and she is. Was that running, before or after they adopted? That's after they adopted okay. her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but she pretty much rules the boat yard. So if you're down there, look for her. She's very lovable. She's uh, not too lovable. Well, I mean, for those people who are allergic to cats. Oh, for allergic, if you're if you're allergic, uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. That's a good thing to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've been to many parts of Maryland, but I think the time, I, the, the, this, the part of Maryland that I've spent the least amount of time in is Western Maryland. Oh, and I'm a mountain girl, so I, I love to go on and on about Western Maryland. Please do. Um, you've got um, Washington County, uh, a real Civil War hotbed uh, with the, the National uh, Battlefield at Antietam. Um, shopping. They've got a number of state parks as well, which are, are great for outdoor recreation. The Appalachian Trail actually meanders through Washington County, so they're, they are rich in state and national parks. The CNO Canal is, is also a, a main attraction. Um, it is open uh, year round and it connects up with the Great Allegheny Passageway, and that you could, if, if you're so inclined, either bike or hike from Pittsburgh all the way down to Washington, D.C. Now, it's a multi-day trip and involves um, either setting up camp or making arrangements with local hotels and B&Bs along the way. You couldn't do it by Segway or something like that? Oh, I'm sure you could. Or a horse. Or if you've got a horse, you can do that as well. Yeah, I'm, at my age, Segway is a little more Segway is the best. <laughs> well, the Maryland portion is crushed gravel, so it's, okay. you know, it's, it's not a paved trail, um, although there are rails and trails throughout the state which are converted from railroads uh, and they are paved uh, surfaces, so that makes it a little bit easier to get around. I am truly amazed that we're talking about Western Maryland and the first thing you didn't say was Deep Creek Lake. Oh, that's, that's the first thing that comes that's to mind. That's coming. That's, I was kind of like okay. shifting around out west. Um, Deep Creek, again, is, is one of our most popular. It's a Four Seasons um, yes. destination. I remember being there one time we rented a cabin for Fourth of July weekend. Oh. And it snowed. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but I still caught fish. That's good. Yes. Yeah, excellent fishing there. Yes. Um, and just as because you're bringing it up, uh, there is a new website, fishandhuntmaryland.com, which lists um, the species and where to go. Wow. It has uh, charter captains. There are uh, places along the Chesapeake Bay, for an example, Chesapeake Beach has one of the largest. Um, Charter Captain Fleets available. And now's a good time because? Because it is trophy season. Trophy season. So the big fish are there. And the biggest thing I've caught so far on Chesapeake on Charter, I caught a 43 inch, 44 pound, or vice versa, those numbers, um, on a trip with the old gang. Ah. My old gang. I grew up in Baltimore City. Okay. And uh, um, a number of years ago, I think for somebody's 60th birthday or something, we all got together again for the first time. Oh, and that's, you know, we have somebody in Texas, Florida, Maine, you know, and everybody came in and we got together and we did a fishing trip. Oh, that's awesome. Out on, out on charter. And it was great because within the first two hours, uh, we were on a boat with Captain Fish <laughs> out of Southern Maryland. And uh, within the first two hours, all of us but one, the guy from Maine, caught our uh, trophy, okay. trophy fish. And uh, we all were sitting there having a great time for the next four hours waiting for him to catch <laughs> his, <laughs> you know, and telling old stories about the old gang and <laughs> drinking beer, naturally. And, and a great that, time out on the bay. It was isn't a wonderful that awesome? time. awesome? I mean, just get out there in the fresh air yes. and seagulls following you around. There's a lot, uh, lot of enjoyment and, and, there. And the greatest thing about the, the Maryland area, you know, and I've been, I've been all over the world, lots of different countries and all the states pretty much, and um, whatever you want, seashore, the ocean, the mountains, change of weather every 15 minutes. I mean, <laughs> whatever you want, you can find it here in the arts and the rural recreation areas. Yeah. Um, I've lived in a number of different places. I like the West Coast as well. I like the Northwest. Mm -hmm. um, and this is my first choice of places to live is Maryland. Oh, happy, happy for uh, that. In any case, tell us about your background. How did you get into this to begin with? I actually um, 
zigzagged into this job, I think is the best way. I worked for the Rouse Company for a number of years, the, who actually, Columbia. yep, Columbia, and who actually um, developed the Harbor Place. So, um, went back to college. I was one of those um, older learners and went back to college and Didn't got my degree in, uh, <laughs> in public relations and communications and um, uh, started working for DBED. So it's, it's been since 1999 that I've been doing this particular job. The same job that much time? There the is same something, place? There is something <laughs> new to learn every day. And it's Tell awesome. Tell us some of the, 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 other than the one that you're currently on, the most interesting project that you have for. Oh my goodness. Um, I would say some of the reenactments that uh, we have helped. Um, we had some very significant uh, Civil War reenactments um, during my that tenure. There's a large community that's involved in that. Isn't it? Yes, and uh, very dedicated to um, being authentic and in terms of uh, their spectacles would be of the period. Yeah, I knew a guy who was into reenactments and he could spend hours talking about the buttons. Exactly. Buttons. The buttons, the shoes for the women, the, the fabrics for their gowns and whatnot. So uh, we had thousands of reenactors on site uh, for the Antietam 140th. Oh, wow. And uh, we ran the media trailer there. So uh, I actually got to uh, watch over a Confederate cavalry man's horse because he had to go someplace and nobody was around. So <laughs> you didn't also have to clean up after that. No, <laughs> no, no. We was that to the, to the that's, soldiers that's themselves, but <laughs> I got to babysit a horse, so <laughs> that made me happy. And actually, Meryl, are you talking about horses? You know, we're uh, we're we talking about horse country. I've not talked about horse country. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about horse country. Everybody, this is Jerry Getka and I'm Renee Bailing and we're in North Beach Maryland in front of a store which is named Renee the Old Town Candy Company the Old Town Candy Company has been here for a very long time many many years and since the infancy of North Beach itself that's right it's been here a really long time and what else are we going to do today we are going to show you a lot of North Beach here a lot of landmarks a lot of views the ocean the boardwalk we're gonna have a great time stay with us It took us quite a while to get down here. It sure did. You think it's worthwhile from the things you've seen so far? It looks very quaint. It is quaint. I see lots of flags. I saw a marina with lots of boats, several restaurants, mm -hmm. charter fishing boats. We'll have to try that sometime. And I saw a water slide. Well, Renee, what do you think we should be doing next? Can we go see an art gallery? Why don't we do that? I'm sure there's one around here somewhere. We'll have to have directions, but we'll find it. Okay. <laughs> Back 
everybody. Jerry Gentke, your host. We're talking about Maryland tourism. Um, during the break, we chatted about Maryland Horse Country and the Thoroughbred Association is big here. It is huge, and it's um, it really contributes a lot to our economy as well. So, and the horse industry has this is anywhere from trail rides, so people can come in. There's therapeutic riding centers throughout the state. Obviously, horse racing, Pimlico, yes. and the Preakness coming up next. Is month. there still harness racing in Maryland? There is. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I, I knew years ago that it was a big deal. I didn't know that it was still still here. To be honest with you. And it's, it's pretty exciting watching and, you know, whether or not you're betting, you know, you can actually go and just watch and not have I to I try bet. not to. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, we always put $2 I, in somewhere. you got to pick by the colors of the jockey silk. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the secret. <laughs> I knew there was a secret somewhere. Yes. Well, we've had a great time talking to you about Maryland tourism Thank and various you. places around the state. Is there something we haven't talked about that you want to make sure that our audience knows about? Our state parks, uh, this is a sister agency, the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, again, a great way to get the family out in the uh, outdoors, some fresh air, with hiking, the biking, uh, camping, if uh, you're so inclined, where they have a number of cabins that you can rent, okay. so you don't have to have a tent. Or Do they have refrigerators cabin. and air conditioning for my kind of camping? But no, I, but I can tell you a little secret about some lodges that do. Okay, <laughs> cool. We're all set. You can tell me those after the okay. show. <laughs> I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Patty England from Appreciate the uh, Maryland Tourism uh, uh, Agency, right? Uh, Maryland Office of Tourism. Maryland Office of Tourism yeah. with DBAN. Yes. Um, thank you very much. And thank you for um, having if, if they have any questions of any kind, they'll contact, visit Maryland. Visit Maryland.org. Maryland. And then there's instructions there if they want to talk to a tribal counselor, there's the way to get in touch from there. So we can still have that personal touch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everybody. Now, although this is an antique and classic boat show, they do have some cool cars here. This is a Mustang. Looks like one of the early years, 1964. That was quite a few years ago, so this is old enough now probably to be a classic, certainly not an antique. We've got some other cool cars coming in. Here's a modern Thunderbird and a great Corvette, and I'm going to have to get out of the way because those folks want to pull right in where I am. What year is your Corvette? What year? 1959. 1959. Great looking. Kites. So we also have the Candleberry Shop. Anything you want in candles. How about Willow Bells? Looks like some dresses. And there's the Sweet Bakery. And isn't that a sweet looking little building? But the stuff inside of that is even better. A little further down the street, the Medicine Shop. As you can see, it's a busy day on Main Street. This is Talbert Street in St. Michael's.